Hi everyone, my name is Michelle. I'm a customer success manager here at Iterable and welcome to Iterable's second office hours. So if you joined us last time, last time we talked about workflows, but today we're going to be discussing recurring campaigns, specifically how to create one from a dynamic list that collects people who have received a custom event within the last three days, essentially like an order received event, and then sending them a recurring campaign based on that list. Um, and that's gonna go out every three days. And if you have any questions, feel free to chat those in. Um, we will answer them along the way. Okay, so. This is our video training project environment, and to make things a little bit easier, since this is a 30-minute session, I have already created the parent campaign of the recurring campaigns. So essentially, when you create a regular base campaign, you'll be given the option to create a recurring campaign. So I'm just going to clone this parent campaign really quickly and then give you an idea of how it's going to look on your end when you decide to create a recurring campaign. So recurring campaigns are pretty useful if you want to send out weekly newsletters um, and then you can insert data feeds to change the content every week or like in this example, ch change the contacts who receive the email itself. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do. This example, you can also create this in a workflow, but for this office hours, we're going to be showing you how to do this through just a recurring campaign. So as you can see, I already have a list selected and my template selected. So this is the template that we'll be using. It has handlebars and conditional formatting. So if someone has this information on their profile, it'll populate within there. And for this conditional formatting, um, essentially, most users who fall within that dynamic list should have this populate because it's something that we're searching for in the list, which I will show you later. So you're going to want to save and continue once you've selected and edited your template, and then you'll be brought to the review and launch page. Now this page is pretty standard for a blast campaign, but you'll see that you also have an option to schedule the campaign for later. Within there, you have an option to make it recurring. I think since this was already cloned from a parent campaign of a of a recurring campaign, it's already been selected, um, but there should be a toggle that offers you to make it recurring. So you can set the send time, which you can change by clicking here, just like a standard scheduling campaign. And then you can also select an end date. You can choose to run this campaign every day or in this example, three days. You can also skip specific days of the week and choose one to pre-create the campaign. So this will allow you to pre-create the child campaign within 12 hours before it's set to be sent. And then like another scheduled campaign, you can also set to send within the project time zone or the recipient's time zone. Um, I'm not actually gonna schedule this because we already have one, but that's kind of the format of how to set up the recurring campaign. And if I'm moving too fast or if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so let's go back to the list. So I'm going to show you the query that we've run to find the number of users that will be sent this email every three days. So as you can see, I have this list that says customers who, who have an order received within the last three days. So we sent in custom events for this example or use case. And then based on when they receive or set this event on their user profile, we're going to adjust the query to that. So we've, I can start from fresh. So I'm gonna add, usually when you get to segmentation, this is the page that you're brought to. So we're gonna select custom event. And then I want a specific custom event, so I'm gonna search for its name. In this case, it's order received. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's set on the user profile. Now to make sure that you're only targeting people or sending to people who have a, custom event of order received within the last three days, you're going to want to change or adjust the creation date. So you're going to adjust the creation date to after now minus 72 hours, or you could do now minus 3D, and that's going to search within the last three days and look for any individuals who match that criteria. So in this example, it's 21 contacts. Then once you 
finish your segmentation, you have the option to save as a dynamic list or save as a static list. Because this is a recurring campaign and only the participants are changing, we're gonna be saving this as the dynamic list. Now I'm gonna bring you back to the Blast Campaign All Campaign tab. So you'll notice that we have this original received order campaign for March 2017. You'll notice that this is the pairing campaign because it has the original title. Any recurring campaigns will have recurring in front of it and the date that it was pre-created. Some people get a little confused about this because they think that the date is gonna be when it's gonna be sent out. That's not entirely true. It's only when it's pre-created. So let's say I'm sending this out on the 15th at 6 a.m., but I wanted the campaign to be pre-created 12 hours before. That's gonna show 2017-03-14. And it looks like there might be a question. So, Someone wants to know, so if a recurring cam blast campaign and triggered campaigns are basically the same thing. That's not entirely true. Um, recurring blast campaigns will automatically be sent out um, every, depending on when you set it to go out and then triggered campaigns are gonna be sent out through an API trigger. So when you make that API call, if you're making that every day, essentially it could act as a recurring campaign, but, um, it's mostly the recurring blast campaign will automatically be sent out and be sent to a specific list. Okay, um, any other questions? If not, we'll move on. Okay, awesome. So this one has already finished. You can tell by its uh, status right here, but then you'll notice that this one has been scheduled. I know we said that said that we're going to be sending this every day, but for the purposes of this example, I've just pre-created this campaign and set it to be sent out on March 15th, but we can change the actual send time. But I wanted to show you kind of what it would look like once it's pre-created. So you'll notice that it says scheduled. It's been pre-created. It's waiting for the queue and waiting to be sent out at 12 p.m. PST. So you can make any edits prior to a child campaign being sent out. And you can do that just by clicking on it and then going through the different steps of the campaign process. So let's say I wanna make a change to this child campaign. I can click on the design and edit the template from there. So let's say I wanted to say, let us know how you feel about your most recent received order. So let's say I wanna add something like, uh, to the subject line, like, it's March Madness. I can do that here. So you can edit this as a regular campaign, but note that if you make any edits to the child template, that effect or change will only affect the child campaign. It won't affect any campaigns that are created later down the line. So you'll wanna be aware of that. We've had a lot of questions about people asking how changes on the child campaigns affect the recurring campaigns as a whole. Only changes to the parent campaign will affect any campaigns that are created after. So this change is only gonna affect this current child template because it's already been created. So we're gonna save that and then save and continue to review. And then for any child campaign, you can also edit the time that you want to send it if you wanted to change that. But again, that's only really going to affect this campaign. It's not going to affect any campaigns that are created after this. So if you want to make changes to your recurring campaigns, make sure you make them to the parent campaign, which are pretty easy to find because it's essentially the title of the child campaigns without the recurring and the date. So you can reschedule this campaign. And then you'll notice that you have the option to also make this a recurring campaign, um, but I'm not gonna do that. Essentially, if you wanted to create a recurring campaign, the toggle would be like this, as talked about before, but I can reschedule this to be sent out on the 17th instead. And make that edit. So that's how it's gonna look like um, and then another thing you can do is go to the send calendar and you are able to view the recurring campaigns from the send calendar as well. So since originally it was on the 15th, but now it's gonna be on the 17th. 
So now it appears here. And this is really helpful if you have recurring campaigns because you can see when they're gonna go out um, if you don't have them sent out every day or if it's just once a week. And then just like any regular campaign, you can click on, once it's finished, you can click on the campaign analytics page and view any associated analytics page with them. One thing to note is that for each recurring campaign, they're gonna have their own heat map and that's because it has its own campaign ID. So you, unfortunately at the moment, you're unable to view sort of an aggregate of that because they are their own individual campaign. We don't have any data, so it's not gonna appear, but that's kind of what it looks like. And then, like any other campaign, you can look at any of the analytics. So pretty useful. So for this example, we kind of gave you something that you can do if you just wanna change who receives the email. So in this example, they, the user would have a custom event on their profile. I can bring up a user. And based on the creation date of that custom event, we're gonna pull them into this list and send them the email. It's not gonna, if you have a recurring campaign and you have a dynamic list with that, you don't have to worry about sending it to the same person twice unless they happen to fall under that custom event. So let's say I get an email yesterday, chances are unless I create another Unless I have another custom event on my profile, I'm not gonna have, it's not gonna go to me again. So that's one thing to do. Again, you can do this through a workflow, but this is one workaround that we can, that you can do it with if you don't wanna create it through a workflow. So we'll notice that I received this, or was sent an email, but prior to that, I had a custom event of order received. And then I have an order item and order amount. And according to the template, that's gonna include the order item in the template, but I also have it on my user profile and that's gonna pull it from there. So you can customize this in really any way that you want and really make this your own. Are there any questions so far? So there's a question about sending the email manually. Um, and if they'll be sent an email when the blast goes out. So essentially when you schedule a recurring campaign, it's only gonna go out at the time that you schedule it. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the send email manually aspect? So I know there was a question earlier. Oh. Ah, okay. So. Clarification, there's no way you can send an email from the user profile. It's only really gonna show you the send events. Um, you can choose to resend it if you'd like, but most people advise against that because we don't wanna bombard users with emails. Um, and the only real way to send out a campaign is by scheduling it or by sending it at the time, at like right now. So let's go back to the clone that I created. So actually, let's go back, sorry about that. So you'll notice that within each list, campaign on this list, they have an updated date, but they also have a launch date. So that's when emails will be sent out. There's no way to do this from the user profile except for the resend button. The user profile generally just shows the history of it. Okay. So in order to actually send out the email, you will have to click on send campaign right now if you're just doing a general blast campaign. Um, it'll ask you to confirm. But if you're doing a recurring campaign, such as in this example, you're gonna wanna click on the scheduled campaign for later. And then depending on what you've selected here, it's gonna send that out. So let's say I do wanna send this out on the 21st as a recurring campaign, and I wanna send this out on the first, or at 1 p.m. Oh, and then all dates and times are based on your project time zone, until, unless you specify that you want to send at the recipient's time zone. And let's say 
the recipient time zone doesn't exist on the user profile, that's going to, you're gonna have to set a fallback time zone. So generally that's gonna be New York or your project time zone. So you can select an end date. I'm gonna select the 7th of April. And then I can also choose days of the week to skip. So let's say I don't wanna do Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday. And then I can also set the days that I want to rerun this campaign, essentially pull all users from that list and then send to them. So I'm gonna choose every three days. And then you can't create pre-create the campaign more than 24 hours. If you do, you will get an, you should get a red bar here and it'll tell you something like you can't, well, it'll give you this as well if you choose the recipient time zone. But I believe it also gives you an, you can't schedule a recurring campaign a certain number of hours before. So that's something to keep in mind. Usually campaigns are pre-created every eight to 12 hours, I wanna say, just in case people wanna make any edits to the campaign or if they wanna prove it prior to that. Um, was that clear? Okay, um, any other questions? Okay, awesome. So we will actually be sending out a survey for this office hours. We hope you found it really useful. We're planning on having office hours at least once a month for the time being, just to see, engage um, people's ideas on it and opinions on it. And so, the survey that we'll be sending out will be extremely helpful. You'll be able to get feedback on what you liked about this and any new topics that you want us to cover. Um, yes, so great question. Someone just asked if these sessions are recorded. Um, we have recorded the previous session and we're recording this session right now. I forgot to mention that earlier, but we will be uploading those later um, and hopefully very soon. Um, those will be available through our support page. And if you'd like access, or if you'd like information on that, please just let our customer success team know. And if you have any questions, feel free to chat us on the intercom that appears at the very bottom of the page in the platform or email us directly at support at um, That's pretty much it. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks so much.